Hello students. Welcome to Narayan TV Kalyan Online Classes. So in the last video we have discussed about the factors that was the formation of covalent bond. Clear ma? So these are the factors and which favors the formation of covalent bond. So what it is here? Small size of cation, large size of anion, high charge on both the cations, anion and you know cation, and pseudo electronic configuration. Clear so this factors and uh, they have the covalent bond. How they have the these factors have the covalent bond formation that we have to discuss here. One concept is there. That concept we will call as a polarization. Clear? Right? So what is the polarization and what is the polarizing power? What is the polarizability? We will discuss here. Clear? Right? So this is just I will not I will explain. I will not give any. Notes for this directly. You, you, you must know what is the concept of this polarizing power and polarizing power. Okay. So simple. And take one cation and the anion. When cation and the anion approaching close together, okay. then what will happen? Positive means cation, negative means anion. Positive negative, there will be attraction. So that's why the positive charge attracts the electron cloud, valence electron cloud of anion towards it because positive and negative attraction will be there and then the electron cloud is attracted by the which one here? Yeah, cation so that's why the electron cloud is in the between cation and anion and that we will call it as a polarization simple, take here, this is cation I have taken here, this is which one here? Yeah, cation yeah. A simple idea like this is a cation. Yeah? And now I am taking anion. This is anion. Yeah? So now you know that here these are valence electrons. Just assume these are valence electrons. When there is no cation approaching anion, then this electron cloud is symmetrical. Then this cation is approaching towards the anion. Then what will happen? There will be electrons means we charge. This will have negative charge. Then we charge. This is cation means having the charge. Cation is having positive charge, shall I write this is positive charge, this is a cation, this is a cation, clear? Yeah. So now, and the negative and the positive, there will be attraction, so that's why this electron cloud, it is distorted, distortion of electron cloud takes place due to the attraction between the valence electron and the cation, clear? Okay. And this distortion or polarization of these electrons Anion electrons will be called as a polarization. Clear? Right? So means you see just assume here positive charge ion is there, here negative charge ion is there. The electron high concentration of electrons between the positive and the negative charge, and that leads to the formation of covalent bond. That leads to the formation of each one here, yeah, covalent bond. So that's why this concept we will call as a polarization. What is the polarization here? The you know uh, attraction of electron cloud or cation attracts the electron cloud of anion towards it. Clear okay. Resulting of this and a distortion of the distortion or polarization of and this is you know polarization of electrons takes place. That concept we will call it as a distortion takes place and that con distortion means what? Symmetrical and now it is not symmetrical. That we will call as a distortion. So that is leads to the formation of covalent bond. Greater the polarization and greater will be the covalent bond. That is the one concept. Here, polarization. Polarization. What is the polarization? Distortion of valence electrons of anion. That will be called as a polarization. Is directly proportional to the covalent bond. Covalent bond. Clear what this is. Now I will tell one, I will give you some example here. Suppose I have two cations. Here one cation and this is another cation. Here this is a cation and here also one is a cation. But one is small in size and another one is bigger in size. Now on which cation positive charge density will be high? Clear one? You have to understand. Then only we can easily understand this one. Okay. So two cations I have, one cation, both cations are having one unit positive charge. But I am asking on which cation 
positive charge density is more. Density here I am not saying positive charge. Positive charge density. Positive charge density means here positive charge. Amount of charge. Amount of charge divided by which one molar? Yeah. One. Divided by which one molar? Yeah. One. This is charge density. Clear? Okay, this is one which one here? Yeah. Charge density on which one molar? Yeah. Now you see, which one is having high charge density, which is having less volume, low volume, which is having low volume here. This is size is small, size is small means volume will be less. So volume is less, then automatically it will have the high charge density. You have to remember that one. Clear one? High charge density always will have the smaller ions. Either it is negative charge or it is a positive charge. Clear one? So that is. Here, if I take the small cation, the positive charge density will be more here. If positive charge density will be more, then it will attract the, because here electrons are there, you have more positive charge, more attraction of electrons. So that's why, and gradually will be the polarization. Gradually will be the polarization. Gradually will be the total character. So that's why, here the small cation is there, and it has the formation of which one? one covalent bond. Clear Next one. Next one here, large size of anion. Anion size why it should be large? Because you know, when size is large, then nuclear force on the outermost electron will be very less. Because this is one <coughs> positive charge. Clear one? Another one is here, nucleus here. This is nucleus. Here electrons are there. Here electrons are there. Clear one? Now you see, if charge is here, size is small, then the distance between the nucleus to outermost electrons will be very small. So that's why nucleus it holds the electrons very tightly. But here in this case, the distance between the nucleus to outermost electrons will be very less. Black means very large here. Distance between the nucleus to electrons will be large here. If distance is large, nuclear force on the outermost electrons will be less. If electron, nuclear force will be less, and these electrons can easily remove. Clear? That's why if the anion size is large and those electrons easily attracted by which one? Man? Cation. So that's why distortion or polarization takes place very fast in case of which one? Man? Large anion. Got my point? That is high charge. If charges are more, attractions will be more, attractions will be more, polarization will be more, polarization will be more, covalent character also increases. That is this concept. Clear one? So what is polarizing power here? Clear one? The polarizing power belongs to the cation. Means the power of the cation to attract the electrons of anion is called polarizing power. What is the polarizing power one here? The power of cation to attract the electrons of anion is called as a polarizing power. The polarizing power. Clear? What is polarizability? Polarizability belongs to the anion. What is the polarizability? Polarizability means the tendency of anion to get polarized, to get distorted. He is called as what it is here? Polarizability. The tendency of the anion to get polarization or to get polarized. He is called polarizing is called as what it is here? Polarizability of Clear? If gravity are polarizing power and polarizability, and you know gravity will be the polarization, automatically covalent character also gravity. Clear? Me? So these are the three main concepts. So I, I mentioned here why if small size of cation or large size of cation are high charge on both the cation and anion, that was the formation of covalent bond means this is the concept. Clear? Polarization. Clear? Yeah. So simple concept, polarization means what it is going to Distortion. And you know the positive charge ion attracts the electrons, valence electrons of the anion towards it. That results the polarization. Distortion of electrons. That is simply one word. Distortion of the electrons of the anion is called as a polarization. By the which one? Cation. Distortion of Valency electrons of anion 
by the cation is called as a polarization. This polarization is depends upon polarizing power and polarizing energy. What is the polarizing will polarizing power? The power of the cation to attract the electrons of anion is called as a polarizing power. What is the polarizability? The tendency of the anion to get distorted or polarized is called as a polarization. Get the polarization power and grammar will be the covalent character. Why covalent character grammar? Because you know these electrons are high concentration due to this polarization, high concentration of electrons between the two atoms. The concentration of electrons, which electrons over up there, that leads to the bond formation. That is the what is one here. And the next one here, another fourth one is there. Clear one? So what is the fourth one here? Pseudo electronic configuration. Clear one? What is pseudo electronic configuration? Clear? Up? This is we have to discuss about. This also pseudo electronic configuration is there that also counts the formation of this bond here, covalent bond. And how we have to discuss here? Clear? One? So you know. Noble octet we have discussed here. Octet means what? Man? If uh, eight electrons are there in the valence system, that is a, you know, what, what configuration that is? Noble gas configuration. Pseudo electronic configuration means 18 electrons are there in their valence system instead of eight electrons. That configuration we will call it as a pseudo electronic configuration. Clear? Okay? So simple, I will mention here one simple example. Suppose Cu plus ion is there. Cu plus. What is the Cu plus one here? Copper plus. Copper, you know, <coughs> I will just write first of all Z. Z. Copper Z is equal to how much one here? 29. What is the electronic configuration you already know? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d. Clear one? So this is 4s1, 3d. Actually, exceptional configuration we have already studied. So now I am writing here. How I am trying to see? I will write this is two electrons here, and the second shell how many electrons? Eight electrons. In the third shell how many electrons? One. Ten plus six, six plus two. Because three is there. That is the third shell. Eighteen electrons, and here this is the electronic number. Okay. If I write this is the this is kappa. If I write here Cu plus one. Cu plus one means what it is? One. We have to remove one electron. Remove one electron here, then what will get? 2, 8, and 18. 2, 8, and 18. Clear? So, balance electrons, how many are there here? 18 electrons are there. And that configuration will be called as a pseudo electronic configuration. If you write for this, you know, the electrons we have to remove always from the higher energy level. Itself. Means 4s, you have to remove one electron here. Then what is the electronic configuration? I will write a last one here. Up to here we have neon. Up to here what it is one? Up to here neon. And what I will write here? 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s0 because we have removed one electron from the 4s electron. So what do you get one? 4s0. Means there is no electron. This is the valence electronic configuration. Means what is, how many electrons are there in the valence shell? And if Cu plus ions are there, and they traverse the means 18 electrons are there, two electron configurations are there, they traverse the formation of covalent bond. Why they traverse the formation of covalent bond? Because you know that we have studied already shielding effect. Clear one? Yes, I all has high shielding effect than the PR at all, than D and F1. This is the shielding effect of what is my R at all here. R electrons actually. What is shielding effect? Shielding effect means you know. And the nuclear charge, and here some electrons protects the and uh, the electrons in the orbital protects the outermost electron from the nuclear charge. Like they act like a wall. Clear? One? So that's why nuclear charge on the outermost electrons will be less. Clear? So in this case, what happened? What is the lost orbital here? D orbital. D orbital are having. You know, this is simple. This is nucleus. Clear? So now what will happen? You see, suppose this is the nucleus and cells are there. And suppose here any uh, electrons are present here, S R dollar, P R dollar is there, S R dollar, P R dollars are there here, in this one electrons are there, there also most electrons are there. Now these electrons protect the outermost electron from the nucleus because nuclear force of the outermost electron become less because of this shielding effect of 
electrons present in the S and V electrons. Then we have studied all the time, we can't tell this by mass. Now, V electrons are poor shielding effect, poor shielding effect of the V electron, nuclear force on the outermost electrons will be what it is more. more means what happened I want to say here if it is a pseudo electronic configuration nuclear charge will be more on the which one outermost electron means suppose nearby some electrons any electrons are there here any electrons are there this nuclear charge on this electrons will be attracted for if attraction will be there more the charge positive charge then what will happen now? more will be the covalent gas more will be the polarization and more will be the covalent gas Clear? So that if I compare this is copper plus one and sodium I would like Na plus Na plus means what in one? Two eight. This is the what is here? You know which electrons are there? You know it is one s two, two s two, two b six, three s one. If I remove one electron, sodium this is. If I remove this is two eight one. If I remove one electron, then what I get one? Two eight. Two eight means of what, what the Electrons are there here. Yes, and we are not. Clear? But yes, and we are not. Are having more shielding effect. More shielding effect means nuclear charge to become less. The effect, um, the action of you know nuclear charge on the outermost electrons will be less. It cannot attract outermost electrons. Means other electrons, nearby electrons, it cannot attract. So that's why here we are calling pseudo electronic configuration is there. D electron comes. If uh, you know octet electronic means a noble gas electronic configuration is there, then which electron will come? S and P electron. So B electron is less shielding effect, so that's why nuclear charge more on the electrons. So more on the nuclear charge more on these electrons than distortion takes place, polarization takes place, then covalent character increases. Clear? So that's why if I write CuCl or NaCl. And which one is more covalent character means we have to take the uh, CuCl is having more covalent character than the NaCl. So these are about what it is one here and factors starts the formation of covalent. So now and I have discussed here four points and the which have the formation of covalent one and based on the concept we have to do this question. So you have to write the covalent bond or covalent character or which one which carbon will have more covalent character. Clear We have to answer it. Clear? See the first one. Lithium chloride, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, rubidium chloride, and cesium chloride. So which compound is having highest covalent character? That we have to identify. Clear one? See now. In this case, the first one, in all cases you see. Anion is same. What is the anion one here? See here, because if you dissociate this compound, you will get Li plus and Cl minus, Na plus Cl minus, K plus Cl minus. This is the clear. So now you see, in all cases, anion, name which one I what we call anion. Anion is same. But what is the difference here? Cation is different. So that's why don't bother about the anion here. See the cation. Clear one? So cation means lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. First group elements. Clear one? Sodium, you know, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. As you are moving from the top to bottom, as you are moving along with the you know group, size increases. Clear one? So that's why we know that here small cation have as the which one? Covalent bond. Which one is the small cation here? If you write here, lithium. Sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. As you are moving down the group, size will increase. Yes. Clear? So, which one is having the smallest size here? Li plus Li is having smallest size. Smallest size, you know, Li plus is what is cation. Small size cation has the which one? Covalent one. So, that's why compared to all, this one will have the highest covalent character. And sodium and potassium. Sodium is smaller cation compared to the potassium. This is the covalent character. So cesium is having large size, so that's why large size cation will not traverse the formation of covalent bond. So which one is having the highest covalent character? You can call it. This is the covalent character. Clear? Next one. Second one you see in this one, K plus F minus. And here, 
this is the how they will dissociate right? clear ma so in this case cation is same now clear ma what you have to see here cation which anion and what is the formation of covalent bond large size anion which is the large size fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine fluorine the seventh group fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine as you are moving along the group size increases and the fluorine is small size iodine is large size anion so large size anion forms the covalent character so that's why ki molecule will have highest covalent character compared to the remaining bond so in this one fluorine is small anion small anion means you know it won't have the formation of covalent bond that is now fcl3 and fcl in this case you see iron here also iron here also chlorine here also chlorine But what is the oxidation number of iron here? What is the oxidation number? You know how to calculate the oxidation number? X. Here what it is now? Minus one. So X and three into X plus three into minus one is equal to zero. X is equal to how much now? Plus three. Here what is the oxidation state of iron now? Plus three. Here plus two oxidation state. Clear? Cation same. Cation same. That time you have to see the charge on the iron. Grab the high charge on the ions. That was the formation of which one? Chlorine bond. So which one is having high charge here? Chlorine here. Both cases chlorine is having same charge. But here iron is having, you know, cation is having in this case large charge, high charge. So that's why it is more covalent compared to the FCL. Now last one. CuCl and NaCl. I already mentioned just now only. CuCl means what it means? Cu plus Cl minus Na plus Cl minus. Cu plus ion will have the which configuration? Pseudo electronic configuration, pseudo electronic configuration means which orbital will come? D orbital. So that's why nuclear charge. D orbital due to the pull shielding of that, you know, D orbital. Nuclear charge on the this is nuclear charge. This is just a zone and C U plus cation here. And here which one is there? C L minus C L. This is which one was C U plus. Clear? Yeah? And which orbital is coming here? Three D orbital. This three D orbital pull shielding effect of this three D orbital. This positive charge ion attracts the electrons towards it. So polarization takes place gradually. So that's why covalent character is more in this case. Here, which configuration here? You know, in this one pseudo electronic configuration, this is noble gas configuration. Pseudo electronic configurations are more favorable for the formation of covalent bond than the you know noble gas electronic configuration. This is very very important for your competitive examination. All points I have explained here. Next, I will write here properties of covalent bond. So now we have to discuss about the properties of covalent bond. Clear one? So factors, terms, the covalent bonds we have completed. Now properties of covalent bonds we have to discuss. Clear one? So here covalent bonds they can exist as solids, liquids, and you know gases also. Clear one? So that's the example here. Iodine if you take. Iodine means what is the bond one here? I and I bond. It is a pure covalent bond because you know the bond part, the bond between the two similar elements will be called as a pure covalent bond or non-polar covalent bond. Clear one? So these are all are you know pure covalent bond characters they show. And iodine is in the, at room temperature. It is in the form of solid. Bromine is in liquid and chlorine is in form of what it is my here gas. So that's why what it is my here and they can exist in any form here. Yeah. yeah. So next one is covalent bond possesses directional characteristics. Hence covalent compound shows the steric. You know very important one uh, difference between the covalent bond and ionic bond. Ionic bond is non-directional and covalent bond is a directional. Directional means what it is my here and it has to approach the Ion, one cation, another anion. Means one cation is there, and anion has to approach in a proper direction. If it comes in any direction, bond formation will not take place much effectively. So that's why to form a covalent bond, the anion should approach the cation in a direction, in a suitable direction. It has to approach. So that's why it is a directional covalent bond. Is a directional, and ionic bond is a non-directional. That we are going to means uh, we will discuss that one is. In a ladder, clear? Right? So, hence covalent compound shows the stereoisomerism. If directional bond is directional, then they will show the stereoisomerism. 
So what is the stereoisomerism that we will discuss in the organic chemistry? So the concept we have not started yet. So that's why we will not go through this. Just remember, and when we discuss about the stereoisomers, then what is this point meaning? You can easily understand that. Clear? Next one. Covalent compounds have low melting and boiling points. M means melting points and B means boiling points. Clear? Okay? So why they have uh, low melting and boiling points means the covalent bond is not that much strong compared to the ionic bond. Ionic bond is very very strong, but covalent bond is not that much strong. So if bond is not that much strong, you need to supply less heat energy to break the bonds. That we will call as a what is known here melting point or ah, boiling point. If liquid is there and to liquid to convert it into the vapor. How means there will be liquid, liquid. There will be some attractions. You have to break those attractions by supplying the heat energy. If attractions are very strong, you have to supply high means high heat energy. Means you have to supply the a lot of heat energy, and that heat energy means you have to supply the lot of temperature, and that will be called as what is the boiling point. If it is solid, is there solid to convert into the liquid, and you have to uh, increase the temperature, and that will be called as a melting. Level. So that's why bond is strong. Automatically, the melting and boiling points means melting and boiling points means what? It is the temperature. If bond is strong, high temperature required. That is melting and boiling points. And the solid to liquid means melting point. Liquid to gas uh, means boiling point. That is only. So that's why covalent bonds have covalent compounds have low melting and boiling points because of weak bond of between the two similar atoms. Clear one? R different than what I mean. Clear? That is. So I am comparing this boiling point is not that much weak as you think. Clear? So it is strong only, but compared to the ionic bond, it is weak. Clear one? That is. And these are soluble in non-polar solvents. Clear one? Because you know these are non-polar. Covalent bond is you know one is two types. I mentioned non-polar and polar. Whatever it may be in the covalent character, in the covalent bond, and polar character will be very less. So that's almost they uh, behaves like a you know they behaves like a non-polar compound. So that's why non-polar compounds they dissolve in non-polar solvents only, like what you know benzene, but insoluble in water. Clear? Ionic compound they are soluble in water, but insoluble in you know and benzene like so non-polar solvents. Clear? So this is covalent compounds do not conduct electricity. They do not conduct electricity. To conduct the electricity, we need a free ions. Clear? Okay? Free ions will carry the electricity. In, if you take in metals, current carried out by the carried by the electrons, but in the solids, liquids, and current is carried by you know ions, free ions. If ions movement is there, then they can carry the electricity. But here in the covalent compound, and you know. They are what it is one non-polar. They can be converted into polar. Suppose if I take previous non-polar uh, covalent bond, they can be partial positive and partial negative. But bond completely will not break. Clear? Right? So completely breaks, then free ions we will get. But in the covalent compound, complete bond for breaking will not take place. Just. The electrons movement will take place just towards the high electronic atom, but and it won't. Uh, you will you won't get the free ions here. But ionic compounds are there. Ionic compounds they are in the form of ions only. If ions are there, then they can easily move. They can carry the electricity. So that's why they are very unable to carry electricity because of lack of which one free charge carriers, free ions. You can simply say clear one. So they show very slow reactions because I already mentioned. They are involved in the means to give the reaction to convert the reaction very fast. Fast reactions means automatically the compound should be converted immediately into the ions. If immediately they convert into the ions, ions ions reactions very fast. Clear? Man? But covalent bond it take much time or much temperature completely to convert it into free ions. Clear? Man? So that's why they show the very slow. Reactions and complex molecular reactions. Clear? Man? So these are about what it is known here. Properties of covalent. So now we have completed covalent bond. Now what it is known here? Ionic bond. I 
convention, we have three types of bonds, covalent bond, ionic bond and dated bond. So first one is completed, very important for the complete examination of this order. Okay. So ionic bond, what is the definition of ionic bond? I already mentioned previous, what is ionic bond? Ionic bond is formed due to the complete transfer of electrons from the one atom to another atom. Clear one? So means, when electrons transfer, complete transfer takes place from one atom to another atom, then what will happen? Ions will be generated. So you know that one atom is there, another atom. This atom is giving electrons to another atom. Means this atom is losing electron, losing electron means which charge it acquires positive charge. Another atom is gaining electron, acquires negative charge, and that uh, positive and negative charge attraction, that electrostatic attractions between the two oppositely charged ion is called as a what it is my yeah, ionic bond. Okay, no? That is the definition. Clear? Yeah? The strong electrostatic force of attraction between the two oppositely charged ions. Which are formed, how they object the charged ion formation takes place, which are formed due to the transfer of electrons from one atom to another atom is called as a which bond over here? Ionic bond. This ionic bond can also be called as electrovalent bond. Clear? So how it will form? Simple example like this. Previous we have discussed, and I will write here sodium. Clear? What is the sodium? 2A1. This is the sodium. Clear one? And next one, what is the chlorine one here? Chlorine two are you know? two, seven, two, eight, and here seven. Here valence electrons one and the chlorine is having valence electron seven. Then what will happen? It lose one electron to get the octet and it gain that electron to get the octet. Clear? Then what will happen here? Sodium, it transfer one of the electrons. Clear? So how I will write here? Sodium is having one valence electron and chlorine is having how many valence electrons? Seven valence electrons. Clear? So reaction takes place between them. Then what will happen? Sodium transfer one of these electrons to what it is now? Chlorine. Then what happens? You see here? What happens? You see? Sodium is giving electron, losing electron. Losing electron means what it is the charge mode. Positive charge. Clear? And chlorine is gaining electron. Gaining electron means you know, and already here seven electrons are there, and this is it will get negative charge. And here this one positive charge. Clear? This oppositely charge here. The attraction between positive and negative means which one? Attraction forces and electrostatic attraction forces. Strong electrostatic attraction forces between the two oppositely charged ion. And which are formed due to the like, complete transfer of electrons from one atom to another atom. These attractions we will call it as a ionic bond. Clear? There will be strong attractions, and this can be simply written as NaCl. So which bond will be present between the sodium and chlorine here? There is a ionic bond. Clear? That is one best example. Clear? And second one. If I take not only this, if I take here. CAF, calcium. Calcium, you know, 2, 8, 2. How many valence electrons are there? 2. So that's why I will write here 2 valence electrons. I will write here 2 fluorine atoms. And here, fluorine atom means, you know, fluorine and fluorine, they will have 7 electrons. Clear? So both the fluorine and fluorine, they will have 2, 7, 8. Clear? Okay? Fluorine. Uh, 1 has 2. What is the fluorine here? 1 has 2. 2 has 2. And it will be 5. So there is only two and seven. Clear one? So this is one electron. This is two electrons, and out of most electrons are seven. Then what will happen? Here also, this gives one electron to this chlorine, another electron to this chlorine. Then what will happen? You see, when they react, and calcium is losing two electrons. Calcium is donating two electrons. It's losing two electrons. Positive charge, and here fluorine gets the big charge. Fluorine gets negative charge and another fluorine also gets the charge now. Negative charge. Clear? Okay? So these positive and negative charge attraction are simply we can write this compound as a CA. Clear? Okay? So this attraction, positive and negative charge attraction, electrostatic attractions, that we will call as a which one here? Yeah? Ionic bond means the bond between the calcium and the fluorine is which one here? Yeah? Calcium and fluorine, the bond is. Ionic bond and 
this is the about the examples of this one over here, ionic bond. Yeah? And one important point here, the ionic bond is formed between the metal and the non-metal. That is very important. Clear ma? So I will write here ionic bond formed between ionic bond formed between metals, mainly metals means first A group and second A group metals. Clear? Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. Second group what is Beryllium, magnesium, calcium, calcium, barium, and that is clear. Ma? This is first group and second group metals mainly involved in the ionic bond. And the ionic bond is formed between the metal and the what is here? Non-metal. Non-metal. Non-metal means mainly 16th group and 17th group. Oxygen family and the halogen family. Clear? Ma? Ionic bond is formed between the metal and the non-metal, mainly metals from the first A and second A and non-metals are. 16th group and 17th group and these are about the what is one here ionic bond and now same we will discuss here factors factors favors the formation of ionic bond factors favors the formation of what bond one here ionic bond so same covalent bond how we have discussed then the same way we have to discuss here and exactly opposite what we have discussed for the covalent bond. Clear? In the covalent bond, cation size should be what it is one small, but here ionic bond, small, large size of large size of cation. Clear? Large size of cation has the this one man here covalent bond. Sorry, ionic bond and small. Size of exact opposite, small size of and why also we will discuss why the reverse it is and next one and no charge, no charge on ions. Ions means both the cation and anion. And in this case, there is pseudo electronic configuration powers, but here noble means after losing electrons. I am saying after losing electrons, noble gas configuration. Favors the what is one don't think that noble gas configuration molecules involved in the ionic bond formation. It is not. Clear one? Noble gas configuration. After losing electron, if anyone is gaining noble gas configuration and that ion or that ions involved in the what it is one here? Ionic bond. Or simply I will say pseudo electronic configurations are not favorable. I will write here. Pseudo electronic configuration not favorable. Which electronic configuration favorable here? That is noble gas configuration. So here, pseudo electronic configuration, electronic configuration not favors, not, not favors, not favors ionic bond. Ionic bond. Clear? Enough? And last one is another one which is a factor is. Lattice energy. Okay. So this is lattice energy. It gives the information about the stability of ionic compounds also. Okay. And for first of all are important. And this is also we will it will come under the stability or covalent character of ionic bond. It will give information. Means now I will discuss here why we have a okay. okay. small size of anion and large size of cation. Okay. You know that one simple thing here. We can write here in this case large size of anion means you know large size of anion means you can write here uh, low ionization energy. Anion should have one is one low ionization energy. Clear? Okay. So here small size of anion means it should have an high electronegativity and Electron affinity. This is okay. Clear? You know that ionic bond how it will form. Clear? So ionic bond is formed between the two atoms. One is cation and another one is anion. Clear? So you know this is positive charge ion, and if there is a negative charge ion, then they combine and gives the one it is molecular. 
a b a plus and b minus this is a what compound ionic compound this is which compound my dear ionic compound okay now means first of all this ionic bond formation takes place it is takes place based upon the formation of cation and anion if cation and anion formation takes place very fast if from the one atom previous i mentioned here sodium is there and then chlorine is there sodium should convert into here it is there and here seven electrons are there it has to do electronic means positive and negative means and ion should form from its atom how fast ions form and there there will be a strong attraction forces and that leads to the formation of ionic bond means ionic bond formation takes place between the which one and we will the uh, ionic bond formation takes place and how fast the ions are formed in the reaction what my point here so cation to form first of all first which one has to form cation cation to form cation means what you have to remove the one electron remove the one electron you will get the cation if cation size is large then we can easily remove the ionization energy become very low so we can easily remove the electron so that's why and if large size is there cation formation takes place very fast clear ma so if cation formation takes place very fast they involve in the ionic bond formation in very ionic bond formation also it will very fast what my point here so if size of one atom which is forming cation and that atom size should be large if it is large and the distance between the nucleus of the most electrons also large then nuclear force of the outermost electrons will be less we can easily remove the electron so cation formation takes place very fast if one of the atom is having high means large size or we can simply say low ionization energy that is the first point what we going to do now which one has to form here minus has to form means it has to gain the electron to gain the electron it should have high electron negativity high electron negativity high electron negativity which molecule will have which are having small in size and those molecule will have high electron negativity or high affinity so that's why another atom anion to form anion to form the size of the one atom should be small clear one that is here small size of anion and that's the formation of which bond ionic bond if a high charge is there then attraction takes place and it, it leads to the formation high dimension high charge means it uh, leads to the formation of covalent bond low charge means it leads to the formation of which one my dear it leads to the formation of ionic bond clear one now surya electronic configuration does not favor the which one my dear ionic bond clear one simple example previous i mentioned here cu cu means what is the I uh, atomic configuration for here. I mentioned that last are uh, 3s2, 3p6, and 3d10, 4s1. This is the atomic configuration. Clear? If I take here sodium, sodium means what it is? One s2, two s2, two p6, three s1. Clear? Means what it is here? 18 electrons. And here one. This is valency here. How much my dear? Eight electrons and one. This is the last two cells I am writing. This is clear. If copper loses one electron, then it leads to the sodium electron configuration. Eight electrons are there in their valency cell. If it removes the one electron, it is only plus minus what we get? Octet. Which one is more stable? Octet or sodium electron configuration? Eight electron. Octet is more stable means it easily lose one electrons to get the most stable. What we got? Yanne can easily lose one electron. Why it can easily lose electron? If it lose it electron, it gets the octet. Octet means what? It is more stable. To get the stability, it can lose very easily electrons. Easily electrons means easily form this one. Cation easily form in the cation means it can form the ionic bond very fast. One by one, but in this case, copper cannot lose electrons very easily 
compared to the sodium. Why? If you lose electron, it is not getting a stable configuration. Sodium configuration is not that much stable. If it is not stable, why you lose electron? So it lose, you don't lose electrons very fast. So it won't generate the cation very fast. So that's why any one formation it is taking place very slow. What we want is so that's why sodium electron configuration is not fast. Which fast here? Noble gas configuration. Noble gas electronic configuration. And last one is here, that is energy that I will discuss. So, as I already mentioned, the last one which uh, has the formation of uh, lattice uh, is lattice energy, or sometimes we can call it as a lattice enthalpy. can also be called as what is one here, lattice enthalpy. Okay. So, here we have two definitions for lattice energy. One is, you know, in the formation of ionic bond, here what will happen here? A plus one is gaseous ion and B minus gaseous ion combined and it gives what it is one. A B plus and this is which one? So ionic compound. This is. Clear? And ions, both are gaseous ions, they combine and it gives the one compound, that compound will be called as ionic compound. That is only. During this process, you know, gases are high energy. Gases molecules will have what it is called high energy. And solid will have low energy. Then, how high energy molecules convert into low energy molecules? By releasing some energy. Isn't it? So that is, you know, gases molecule always will have. Why right? gas molecule always will have high energy? Suppose just if you take ice, clear enough? water liquid, this is ice. And this is liquid. This is what it is H2O oh, gas, gas. If you heat, if you supply heat energy to the ice, ice will be converted into the liquid. And if you supply the heat energy to the liquid, and it will be converted into gases. Means if you put some energy to the liquid, it will be converted into gas. Because gas molecules are having higher energy compared to what is one liquid. So that is only. Gases molecule always will have higher energy than the one in yeah? solid. So, higher energy molecules, how they are converted to low energy molecules? Higher energy molecule has to come to the low energy molecules by using some energy, and that energy we will call as a lattice energy. Clear? Yeah, no? So, this is the amount of energy released when required number of gaseous positive and negative ions combine to form one mole of one mole of ionic compound is called as a what it is one here lattice energy. Okay. In the same way, reverse also we can write here. What is the analog one is? You know, A B is a ionic bond. The bond between the A and B is a which bond? Ionic bond. So the energy required to break this bond, to separate, if you remove opposite direction, this is the reverse direction. If you break this one, they are converted into ions. So how much energy is required to break the one mole of ionic compound into it gases ions and that energy will be called as a what is it? Yeah, lattice energy. Okay. So that's why how much energy is released during the formation of ionic compound and that much energy is required to break that bond to convert it into what is it? Yeah, gases ions. Okay. So that's why two definitions are there. The energy required to completely separate the one mole of solid ionic compound into gaseous ion. And that we will call as a what it is here, lattice energy. Yeah. So simple example I will say, if I mention here, lattice energy of NSL is 788 kilojoule per mole. Means what does it mean man? NaCl, this is NaCl. Therefore, Na plus and Cl minus there will be strong attraction forces between the sodium and chlorine per mole. I am taking here one mole of sodium chloride compound. To break this attractions, how much energy is required? 788 kilo joule per mole energy required to break this attraction and then it will be converted into Na plus gas and Cl minus gas. And that how much energy we are supplying to break that ionic bond to convert it into their respective ions is called also as a what is known as lattice energy. Clear? So in this case the energy release, the energy release means the energy 
uh, here we will represent it by the negative charge. Suppose here in this case energy series is 70, 7, 8, 8 kilojoule per 4 minutes, we will write this as a negative. Why? Because energy is released. Energy is released means exothermic reaction. And here the energy is required to break endothermic reaction. Endothermic reaction means the energy values will be in, in, the, in the exothermic means the energy values will be in the negative and they are endothermic means that this is endothermic 87 88 kilojoule per clear so was simple i will write here um, 788 kilojoule per mole minus if i write this one what does it mean what does it mean this that meaning is na plus ion and cl minus ion gases combined and it forms NaCl during this, this much of energy is released. That energy will be called as a lattice energy. Clear one? And very important here, the lattice energy, it depends upon clear one? some factors. What is that one here? Lattice energy is directly proportional to the charges on the ions. Clear one? What it is here? Charges on the ions. If I take here, Lattice energy, lattice energy is directly proportional to the Z plus Z minus divided by R C plus plus R I minus. Yeah. Tell me, what is it meaning here? And the lattice energy is directly proportional to the charge on the ion. If the charge on the ions are greater, attraction forces are greater. Then it will form very, you know, strong bonds. Attractions are very, very, very strong. So that's why charges on the cation and anion. Positive charge means charge on the cation. Z minus means charge on the anion. Radius of the cation and radius of the anion. Clear one? Means they have the lattice energy, lattice energy increases. Lattice energy and ERG. Lattice energy increases as the charge on the ions increases. Charge on the ions. Charge on the ions increases. Means what does it mean here? I will write directly. Lattice energy is directly proportional to the charge. And Lattice energy is inversely proportional to the radius. Radius of R size of cation R cation. Clear? So this is about the what you have to lattice energy. Now some examples are there. You have to identify which one is having greater lattice energy. Clear? You have to see now here. In this case, lithium chloride, sodium chloride, and potassium chloride. All will have positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative. Lithium plus and F minus. In all cases, anion sizes are same. All are having same charges here. But anion also same. Which one we have to see here? Cation. As the cation means lithium, sodium and potassium. And this first group element. As we are moving from the along the group, you know what will happen? Size is increased. Potassium is having large size. If size is large, lattice energy will be small. So which one will have the highest lattice energy? The F will have the highest lattice energy. In the same way, in this case also, and they are converted into plus 1 and minus 1. And in this case, lithium cation is the same now. Which one is different? Charges are same, cation also same, anion is different. And you know, radius of the Cation or anion increases, lattice energy decreases. So that's why if you are moving from the fluorine to iodine, size increases, size increases, which automatically what will happen? Lattice energy decreases. So it will have lowest lattice energy compared to this. Clear? Next one. And the sodium chloride, NaF, Na plus N, F minus, here what is my Mg plus 2 and O2 minus. Clear? Al plus 3, N3 minus. Valence is same, right? Sodium valence 1 and fluorine valence 1. Magnesium valence 2. Oxygen valence is 2. Clear? Man? If I write oxidation state, plus and minus. Clear? Man? So now, which one is having highest, you know, lattice energy? Lattice energy is directly proportional to charge. 
1 into 1, 1 here, 2 into 2, 4, 3 into 3, 9, because Lagrange's energy is directly proportional to the multiplication of charge on the cation and the anion. So it will have highest charge, it will have the high largest enthalpy. Clear ma? Now you come here, if you see here, Na plus Cl minus, Cu plus 2 and Cl minus, Mg plus 2 and O minus 2. Clear ma? Where, if you see in this case, here 1 into 1, 1, 2 into 1, charges will have to multiply. Modulus will take, because the negative charge will not take here. Clear ma? 2 into 1. 2 and here 2 into 2, 4 and 7, 4, where the charge is gathered, here charge is gathered, so that's why this is the, what is my lattice energy, as the lattice energy increases, means the attraction forces also between the ions increases, okay, but attraction forces are very strong, then you have to, you have to break those attractions, you have to supply a lot of energy, that energy we will call as a lattice energy. Clear one? Lattice energy indicates that how strong that bond, ionic bond is. Clear one? If greater the lattice charge and higher will be the ionic character. Like last we write this, greater the lattice energy. Lattice energy. And here, higher will be the ionic character. Ionic character. Clear one? So this is about the Factors affect the which bond material. Ionic. The next one is last one. Properties of which bond material? Ionic compounds. The factors affect the ionic compounds. I have already discussed. So you know how many points when we have discussed there? Cation size, anion size, charge, and pseudo-electronic configuration is not favored. And for the ionic bond formation, the last one is not expensive. Now, here are some properties of ionic compound. Lattice energy is a very important concept. Clear one? So, they will give you some, you know, compounds and they will ask you to write the order of increasing lattice energy or order of decreasing lattice energy. We have already written there. Clear one? So, next one is properties of ionic compounds. Clear? Yeah? So, ionic compounds generally are solids at room temperature. But covalent compounds, they can exist as a solid, liquid, and gases. But these are generally solids. Why? Because there is a strong attractive forces among the ions. If attractions are very strong and they are in the form of what it is my solids. Clear? Yeah. So that's right. General ionic compounds are what it is they are solids. You know, in the solids, attraction forces are very stronger compared to the liquid and gases. Compared to the liquid and gases, liquids will have the strong attraction forces than the gases. Gases means ions. They will move here and there, so there will be very, very, very less or no attraction forces among the gases molecules. Clear minds? So that's why solids will have means that stronger attractive forces, and those are ionic compounds also, you know, having very high electro, very strong electrostatic force of attractions. They are generally in the form of solids. You know, ionic bond. Ions are not directional because ions means I already mentioned. Ions are in which form one? Gases form. Gases form means they will have any direction here. Means if the gas gas molecule has to go in this direction, in this direction, they can flow here and there, non-directional. So that's why formation of ions bond is also non-directional. But covalent bond is directional. Because their ions are not forming. Atoms are coming here. By sharing electrons, they are coming. In the proper directions, they have to come. Clear to you? That is. You know, ionic compounds have high melting and boiling points. As I already mentioned, ionic bond is very very strong bond. And very strong bond means they will have high melting and boiling point. You have to supply a lot of temperature to break those attractive forces. Ionic compounds conduct electricity in the liquid solution. Solution means in the liquid state as well as in the modular state. Clear one? In the solution, suppose if I take NaCl. NaCl compound, it is a solid. If I dissolve this one into the water, then what I will get? I will get Na plus N, Cl minus aqueous. In the solution, in the water, these ions are present. Ions are present. They can move. Means, when moving the ions, they can carry the electricity. I already mentioned, to carry the electricity, moving ions are required. Free ions are required. Not moving ions, free ions are required. So, in this solution, there are free ions so that they can carry the electricity. Clear? Molten state. What does it mean, molten state? 
Modern state means suppose take just iron, iron rod. Clear one? So it is in which form? Solid form. Now heat that iron rod at very high temperature. Then it will be converted into what it is one liquid without water. We have, have you have you added any water here? No, we have not added. Just the solid is completely converted into molten liquid phase. Liquid phase means that we cannot call as a solution. We will consider as a molten state. Clear one here? So if you take the ionic compound, don't dissolve that one, just heat it, they are converted into the you know like liquid form without water. Clear one? So whenever they are in the molten state and they will have some free ions, they can conduct the electricity. But solids are bad conductor of electricity, even though they are having ions, but in the solids there are no free ions. Why? In the solids, ions are very close to each other, very close to each other means one ion and another ion, positive and negative ions are tightly held by each other, ionic bond. So ions are there, but they cannot freely move in the solid. Clear? In the liquid, ions because in the liquid, between the ions gap will be more so that's why they can easily move in the solids the, between the ions gap will be very less strong attraction force they cannot move so that's why they cannot conduct the ions clear one so ionic compounds are very good conductor in the solutions and the molten state but not in the solid state clear one ionic compounds in the solution so very fast reactions because you know whenever i have added one ionic compound and another ionic compound in the solution they immediately convert into ions when they are immediately convert ions ions are very reactive they involved in the reaction very fast clear one so that's why and they show very fast reaction but you know covalent compounds will show the very slow reactions clear one because it takes much time to convert it into the ions but here when it just dissolve immediately 100% convert into ions clear one ionic compounds are soluble in water but insoluble in you know non polar solvent just one thing like dissolves like Polar solvent, polar compound dissolves in the polar solvents. Non-polar compounds dissolve in non-polar solvents. Clear? Okay. Ionic compounds are, you know, all are polar only because they are in the form of poles, Na plus and Cl minus. These are polar compounds. Polar compounds dissolve in which one? Polar solvent. What is the polar solvent here? Water. What is a polar solvent? These are non-polar solvents. So that's why ionic compound insoluble in non-polar solvents. And next one. Clear? Okay. So these are about the properties of this one here, ionic 